uh, good morning everyone uh, today uh, we are going to discuss uh, the chapter on options and uh, what are the mechanics of option markets uh, this uh, concept is actually very important uh, both as an uh, for the academic purpose also and even if you want to be a trader whether you want to be a swing trader or an intraday trader uh, option uh, trading and option strategies uh, will play a very important role so let us discuss uh, the various uh, option strategies and the basics of the options market so what are options see what an option basically gives the holder of the option a right to do something but he does not necessarily exercise this right what does it mean it means to say that the option holder has the right to execute an option but he may or may not execute or exercise that particular option we will understand uh, this concept in detail uh, when we go into various types of option so an option is a financial derivative so what do what do you mean by derivative a every option has always has got an underlying so uh, whenever you take any option for example whether it is a stock option or an index option both of which will have an underlying for a stock option the underlying will be the stock uh, futures or the stock spot and for the index options the underlying will be the index like nifty index option will have, have the underlying as the nifty so this is a called as the financial derivative so an option which is basically a financial derivative gives the holder the right to buy or sell an underlying but he need not necessarily exercise this option so he may have the right to buy or right to sell but he may not buy or he may not sell so that is the meaning of exercising an option so the option buyer or the option seller may or may not exercise the option but he has the authority to execute the option strategies that is buy or sell see why are option uh, existing what are the uses of option see the first one is for hedging what do you mean by hedging suppose you have an underlying stock and uh, you expect that in the near term uh, the uh, stock uh, price may go down in such a case you would like to hedge your portfolio so how do you hedge this portfolio you hedge the portfolio basically by buying a put option okay see put option is when the market goes down put option will give you a certain amount of profit so basically options can be used for hedging this is called as hedging so that your portfolio value will not change uh, in hedging and secondly options are used for speculation what do you mean by speculation suppose if you believe that uh, the nifty maybe because of various reasons is going to go uh, up by 200 or 300 points in the next one week or 10 days or in next one month you may buy a call option or you may sell a put option also so uh, this is pure spe speculation because you really don't know whether it will actually go 200 points up or it will not go 200 points up but you are just speculating and you are believing that the market will go up and hence you are going to you know uh, take a position in the option with respect to the underlying hence options can also be used for speculation thirdly option can also be used for income generation see income generation happens both when you buy a call option or uh, you you know buy, sell an option uh, generally uh, income generation is done uh, through option selling now option strategies range from a very very simple strategy to a very highly complex strategy so uh, whenever you want to uh, do option trading uh, you have to be very sure uh, of the various strategies techniques involved in the 
utilization of the option um, or even for uh, hedging or speculation or for income generation. So, we must understand that uh, option strategies are very high risk strategies and it should be traded with caution. Option are of basically a two types. One is a call option. The call option gives the holder of the option the right to buy an underlying at a predetermined price and a predetermined date. Whereas, a put option gives the holder of the put option the right to sell an underlying at a predetermined price and at a predetermined date. So, what is a strike price? See, strike price is nothing but the price at which the option holder has the right to buy or sell an underlying. So, strike price may not be the current market price. I am, you must be very clear about this. Strike price can be anything. If the current market price is suppose we say 100 rupees, the strike price can be 80 also, 90 also, 100 also, 120 also. So, that is called as the strike price. So, we should not get confused that strike price is equivalent to the current market price. Expiration date or the maturity date. See, it is the date specified by the contract at which the expiration or the maturity of the contract happens. We should understand where options are all contracts between two persons because if you are buying a particular option, the other person should sell this option to you. So, when a particular person sell an option, then only you can buy an option or if a particular person buy an option, another per per particular person will be selling that option. So, an option is a zero sum game, you should understand that. The stock option have the maturity dates in monthly, quarterly, whereas indexions, index options have weekly, monthly, quarterly, half yearly and yearly expiration dates also. See, uh, in Indian market as of now, the stock option uh, has to be exercised on the day of expiry uh, if you are option is in the money. We will understand what is in the money option, what is out of the money option, we will uh, you know discuss in detail. But for the time being, uh, we must understand and know that for because this is a very important thing. Some people think that the stock option, you know, if you are in the money, you can, uh, uh, you will wait till the expiry and uh, at the end of the expiry, you are going to uh, book the profit that should, that cannot happen because if you leave your uh, uh, stock, you know, stock option to till maturity, then you have to take delivery if you are a buyer and you have to deliver the stocks if you are a seller of the option, if the option is in the money. In the money means if you are making profit. So, let us understand the types of options again. One is call and put option. There are other type of option variety you can say. It is an European option. In an European option, the option holder can exercise the option only at the end of the contract date or at the end of the expiry. Whereas, in an American option, the option holder can exercise the option any time during the option expiry date. Suppose, if the option starts from first of a particular month and it uh, the uh, option you know expire on the fourth week of the month. So, in between first to fourth week of the month, you can exercise the option at any point of time in American option. Whereas, in European option, you can only exercise at the end of the expiration date. All Indian options are based on the European option, not on the American option. Now, let us understand uh, what is uh, the meaning of buying a call option. See, call option gives the holder of the option the right to buy, but there is no obligation on his part to exercise the option and buy the underlying stock at the strike price at, at the time of the expiry of the contract. So, if I am holding a call option, I have the right to buy the option at the end of the expiry at the predetermined strike price at which we the contract was uh, executed and at, on, at the end of the expiry. Okay? 
See what does the buyer of the call option believes? The buyer of the call option believes that the stock price is going to go up in the near future. Let us uh, understand with the help of a small example. Let us say that Ram bought a stock option of an X company. He bought a call option of this X company. Let us assume that the lot size is 100. And if he has executed the option contract with a strike price of 200, you must understand that strike price 200 is not the current market price. Current market may, price may be 115, 190, 210, it can be anything. But the option has been executed at the strike price of 200. And let us assume that the stock is currently trading at 199. Since it is a call option, since the strike price is executed at 200 and the stock price is currently trading at 199, it is out of the money because strike price is greater than the current market price. Now the stock is going to expire in one month. So if the premium for the stock uh, is 5, it means that in order to buy a call option of an X company presently trading at 199 rupees. At a strike price of 200, you have to pay a premium. This premium is nothing like an insurance. You are going to pay, make an insurance by paying rupees 5. That if the stock price at the end of the expiry goes above 200 rupees, I am going to buy that stock by giving the complete uh, amount of the stock. So, if you are paying a premium of 5, which is just like an insurance, the total cost of the premium for a lot size of 100 will be 500 rupees. That is 5 into lot size which is 100. Now, if the stock price on the day of expiry, let us assume is 199. So, then the option will be out of the money. Why it is out of the money? You have agreed to buy the stock at you know, rupees 200 when the expiry date happens. For that you have paid a premium of 5. What does the uh, call option says? You have the right to buy but you may or may not buy. You may uh, buy if you are profitable, you may not buy if it is a loss to you. So, if the stock price happens to be 199, then there will be a loss of 1 rupee because you have to, if you exercise that option, then you have to buy that uh, you know stock at 200 rupees whereas it is trading at 199 rupees so you will lose 1 rupee for every stock since the lot size is 100 rupees you will lose 500 rupees also you have already paid a premium of 5 ru 500 rupees so the total loss is going to be how much 100 rupees because the stock price is 199 and you are uh, buying at 200. So, 1 rupee loss into 100, it is 100 rupees. And you have already paid a premium of 500 rupees as an insurance. So, the total loss will be 600 rupees. So, it is not wise to exercise the option if the strike price is greater than the current market price in the, in the case of a call option. Let us now assume if the stock price is at the date of expiration is 209. In that case, the stock will be in the money because you have agreed to buy it at 200 rupees on the date of expiry. Now the stock price is 209 rupees. What will you do? You purchase that option, you know, stock at 200 rupees and immediately sell in the market because at the market price is 209 rupees, you are going to make a profit of 9 rupees for every stock you sold. Hence, you will earn 9 rupees into lot size which is 100. You will earn 900 rupees, but you have paid a premium of 5 rupees that if, uh, for every stock that is 500 rupees for one lot size of 100. So, you deduct that premium from 900 rupees. So, your total profit will be 400 rupees. So, if your stock is in the money that is if the current market price 
is higher than the strike price then it is profitable to exercise the option buy it at 200 rupees and sell immediately in the market at, at 209 rupees and pocket 900 rupees as your profit. So, let us understand the payoff chart from a long call option. Okay? Now, uh, for that let us understand the notations first. See, ST is the final price that is the price at the on the date of expiry and K is the strike price. So, what will be the payoff from the long call? The payoff will be maximum of the final price minus the strike price which should be positive it should not be negative and or it must be zero so if your strike final price is greater than the strike price then only you will ex exercise the option or you will not get any profit and you will lose the premium which you have paid to execute that particular option so the call option holders exercise the option only if the strike price that is final price is greater than the strike price. So, call option holder does not exercise the option if the strike price is greater than the final price. Let us see this in the form of a chart. See here uh, we have to understand that uh, you know you can see this is the long call. Okay. The K which you see on the you know zero line is, that is the ST that is final price line is that is the strike price. Why we are showing their premium paid up front? The premium which you have paid up front is mainly because that uh, it is a call option. So, you have paid the premium hence you will be only profitable if the uh, final price will be greater than your K that is your strike price. So, call by action results in upfront payment or there is going to be cash outflow initially. Why there is a cash flow? Because you are going to pay an insurance 5 rupees premium you are going to pay to exercise that contract for every stock which you are buying. So, if the lot size is 100, you are paying a premium of 500 rupees. So, there is an initial outflow from your pocket if you are exercise, if you are executing a long call option contract. Now, let us see the sell call option. What is sell call option? See, sell call option gives the holder of the option again the right, but he is under no obligation to exercise the option. To for the underlying st uh, stock at the strike price at the time of expiry of the contract. Now, what does the seller of the call option believes? The seller of the call option believes that the stock price is not going to go down in the near future. So, the seller of the call option believes that the stock price is not going to go up in the near future. Uh, please make a correction it is not going to go down it is going to go up in the near future. So, let us say Ram sold stock option of an X company. Okay? Now, he sold the call option again the lot size is 100 the strike price is 200 and currently it is trading at 199. So, the stock is expiring 1 month hence. So, the premium that is is 5. Now, what, what is this? This is the since you are selling the call option you will receive a premium because the other person to whom you have sold believes that the market is going to go up, but you believe that the market is going to go down. So, option sellers receive a premium of rupees 5. So, the total cost of the premium will be 500 rupees which you are going to pocket that is the inflow you get a 500 rupees because you are selling an option you will get 500 rupees as an insurance from the call buyer. You are selling to somebody who is buying it. So, he will say I will uh, you know buy the stock from you at the predetermined price of 200 rupees uh, you know after one month. So, you say okay I will uh, I have got some stocks with me. I will sell you, sell that stocks at 
two hundred rupees on the expiry date, but you have to give me five rupees initially. See, that is what the this contract means. Selling a call option means now. If the stock price on the day of expiration is hundred and ninety, let us assume, then the option will be in the money. In the money means the price of the stock has gone down. So, if the option seller, if he exercise the option, what will he have to do? He has to buy a stock which is holding at two hundred rupees at hundred and ninety rupees. So there will be a loss of ten rupees for each stock. So total loss will be one thousand rupees. Less he has received a premium of five hundred rupees. So the total loss to the option seller will be five hundred rupees if he exercise the option when the option is in the money. For a call seller, the option is in the money means the strike price. Should be higher than the current, that is the final price of the stock, that is ST, which we have discussed previously. So, for a seller of the call option, if the strike price is greater than the final price of the stock, it it is not uh, good for him to exercise the option. So he will not exercise it. He will go the. Uh, uh, he will uh, let the option expire worthless. He, let us assume if the stock price on the day of expiration is two hundred and nine rupees, then the option will be out of the money. So if the option seller exercise the option, then he will get the stock at two hundred, but has to sell at two hundred and nine. So he incur a loss of nine hundred rupees less the premium received. That is five hundred, which is a loss of two hundred rupees. So, a seller of the call option, uh, if the market uh, strike uh, final price is higher than the strike price, he has to compulsorily exercise the option, and he has to incur a loss of four hundred rupees. So now let us come to payoff chart from a short call option. How does it look like? For that, we will again see the same notation. Here, the payoff from the short call will be minus of max of S T minus K or zero, or it will be minimum of K minus S T. K minus S T will be the loss he is going to incur, or there will be no loss. That is zero. So this is the payoff chart from a short call. Now, option seller want the option. to exercise or go worthless so that they can keep the premium all option seller expect their option to go worthless so that they can always keep the premium they have received from the option buyer let us see this in the form of a chart see here you can see that short call is actually the short call uh, option is you have since you have received the premium that is why the line is above the zero line hence if till the time the uh, stock price is below the strike price k you will keep that premium received and that is going to be your profit whereas if the uh, stock price keeps increasing beyond k you are going to incur a loss so option buyer will have infinite amount of profit but limited loss whereas option sellers will have infinite amount of loss but limited profit so we have to understand this concept so option selling result in net cash inflow initially to the uh, ex executor of the option sell contract now let us understand buying a put option so we have discussed buying a call option and selling a call option now we will understand uh, what is the uh, methodology of buying a put option and selling a put option buying a put option is equivalent to selling a call option here in buying a sell op uh, put option the uh, uh, the person who is executing this contract believes that the market is going to go down or the stock price is going to go down in the near future so 
let us understand this with the help of a example so let us understand you know see that ram bought a stock option for x company he bought the put option lot size is 100 the strike price is 200 so stock is currently trading at 199 this stock is expiring one month hence so what will be the premium the premium again we will let us assume is 5 so he has paid a premium of 5 so the total cost of the premium will be 500 rupees now if the stock price on the day of expiration is 205 rupees then the option will be out of the money so the option buyer if he exercise the option has to buy the stock at 205 rupees which is presently in the market and he has to sell it to the person who with whom he has made the contract at 200 rupees so there will be a loss of 5 rupees that is 5 into lot size 100 500 plus the 500 so the total loss is going to be 1000 rupees so what will he do he will not exercise the option and he will leave the option you know unexercised so the the option will exercise worthless he will lose the premium of 500 rupees which he has paid if he would have exercised the option he would have incurred 1000 rupees loss if he has not exercised he will lose only 500 rupees now let us assume if the stock price on the day of expiration is 190 rupees now the stock price or the contract is in the money so what will he do he will purchase the option from the open market at 190 rupees and sell it to the option seller who has sold him this contract at 200 rupees so he will pocket uh, you know uh, 1000 rupees less the 500 rupees insurance premium which he has paid so he will pocket a profit of 500 rupees so an option put option buyer if the stock price is less than the strike price it is profitable if he exercise the option so now let us understand the payoff chart from a long put option the notations will remain the same the only thing will be here the payoff will be max of k minus st or zero so the put option holder exercise the option if k is that is the strike price is greater than the final price of the option so the put option holder does not exercise the option if this final price is greater than the strike price here you can see the payoff diagram is you know slightly reversed here if the stock price goes below k strike price on the timeline he will make profit if this stock price is below the strike price k he will lose the premium which he has paid so put option will always result in cash outflow initially now let us come to the selling a put option selling a put option is equivalent to buying a call option but call option buying has unlimited profit and limited loss whereas selling a put option has limited profit and unlimited loss we will see how it happens seller of the put option believes that the stock price is going to go up in the near future so let us understand this with the help of a example so ram sold you know has a he has you know sold a put option of x company stock so lot size again we will take it same the so strike price again we will take it at 200 and the stock is currently trading at 199 rupees the stock is expiring one month hence so the premium received is 5 rupees so since he has sold the option he has received a premium of 5 rupees so the total collection is 500 rupees now if the stock price on the day of expiration is 209 which is greater than the strike price of 200 
then the option will be out of the money. Why it is out of the money? Because it is above the strike price. So, if this option seller exercise the option, what he has to do? He has to buy it at 209 and sell it at 200 rupees. So, he will incur a loss of 900 rupees minus the premium which he has received 500 rupees. So, the total loss will be 400 rupees. So, he need not exercise the option. So, he will leave the option worthless and he will just keep the premium. That is why seller of a put option will have limited profit but unlimited loss. Now, we will see how unlimited loss happens. So, if the stock price on the day of expiration becomes 190, then the option will be deep in the money. So, the option seller has to exercise the option. Why? Because he has to get the stock at 190 and he has to sell it at 200 rupees that is 10 rupees lot per stock and 1000 rupees loss minus the premium which he has received is 500. So, his total loss will be 500 rupees. So, a seller of a put option if the option is uh, deep in the money he has to compulsorily exercise the option. So, let us understand the payoff chart from a short put option. Again, the notations remain the same, but uh, the payoff will be minimum of ST minus K or 0. So, the minimum of ST minus K means if the st strike price that is ST is you know less than K, then he will make profit. So, put option seller does not exercise the option if ST is greater than k. So, put option seller has to compulsorily exercise the option if st is less than k. Let us see this in the form of a you know chart. So, this is the short put it is not long put it has been wrongly given the rotation it is short put option. So, you can see the pre, you know, premium has been collected now uh, that is why the long put is above the ok. Now, here if at the strike price if the uh, final price is greater than the strike price then he need not exercise the option. Uh, he will it will go worthless. However, if the final price is less than k the strike price on the timeline or on the price line then he has to compulsorily excise. Short put option always results in cash inflow initially. Okay? Now, this is the you know premium that has been received upfront by selling the put option. Now, let us understand what are the underlying assets in an option uh, strategy. In stock option, you stock will be the underlying, in index option, index will be the underlying, in currency option, currency will be the underlying and in futures option, futures will be the underlying. Now, we should understand what is an option chain. An option chain contains all the strike prices of a particular stock and as a particular expiry. So, uh, yeah, with various strike prices, okay, it can be a, a, it can be weekly expiry, monthly expiry. So an option chain will give the see option chain contains lot of other information like delta, you know Greeks, you know delta, theta, gamma. They will give all those values, the current market price, uh, and the stri various strike prices. On the left side, it will be the call option details and on the right side it will be the put option details. So, that is nothing, no, nothing but an option chain. So, index stock, stock options will have weekly, monthly and quarterly and can extend till next year in quarterly basis. Whereas, stock options have only monthly expiry and it is traded for only next 3 months on the stock exchange. Now, coming to how it is adjusted for dividends. See, whenever a dividend is given on the X dividend date, the stock price gets corrected by the amount of dividend that has been paid to the uh, stockholder. 
are the shareholder so whenever a dividend is given on the ex dividend date the stock price get reduced by the amount of dividend on the stock price however the option contracts are not adjusted for this until the dividend paid is very substantial you must understand the underlying uh, price may get uh, reduced by the dividend paid however the stock option contracts does not change when the dividend is paid until and unless the dividend paid is extremely high now coming to stock splits so stock splits affect two variables what are those variables number of shares and the share price so the share paid gets reduced in the proportion to the stock split ratio what does it mean let us understand with an example suppose if a stock is split 5 for 1 you means you get five stocks for every one stock you are holding presently so if the share price is 100 after the stock split the share price become 100 divided by 5 2 but your uh, you know number of shares uh, outstanding shares will increase five times so stock split will not have any effect on the assets and earning capacity of a company the lot size of the stocks get multiplied by 5 in this case if the lot size is 100 since the stock split has happened so the lot size will become 500 so in general for an m for n stock split stock price reduces by n by m whereas number of stock outstanding increases by m by n times and lot size also increases by m by n times so who are market makers let us understand this concept see market makers are brokers who give both a bid and an ask quote so market makers means suppose i am a buyer and somebody else is a seller so market makers will uh, sell that to that particular person also and they you know uh, buy from uh, a person who is a seller and sell to a person who is a buyer so market makers are basically intermediaries or you can all they also call them brokers see bid is nothing but it is a quote for buying see when you do the stock market trading you see bid and ask bid is nothing for bid is a quote given by a buyer for buying whereas ask is a quote given by seller for selling the uh, stock so the difference between the bid and ask is nothing is called as the spread so the brokers make profit by the bid and ask uh, difference between the bid and ask uh, spread the ask price is always higher than the bid price that is a person who is selling a stock or is selling an index option will always quote higher price than the person who is buying so the ask price always remains higher than the bid price see the main purpose of the market maker is they add liquidity to the market now what is an offsetting order let us understand see it is nothing but a counter order for any buy or sell position so if you are buying a counter order you should be some seller should be there and if somebody is selling a buyer should be there so this is known as counter order now let us understand what is margin requirement see stock options are bought and sold based on a premium on the or uh, the traders who have shot the market has to buy the stock at and give delivery to the person who is buying it so some time assets are bought or the short position in option is taken based on the borrowing from the broker in such cases if the trader default on the day of the delivery then margin call gets triggered so i will make you understand this see whenever you buy stock or sell a stock um there will be certain amount of margin given by the brokers for the option buyers and option sellers now let us assume that this is basically called as leverage so in case uh, uh, you know the client who is a buyer or a seller defaults on the payment then the broker will have to bear the loss 
hence what will the broker do is he will uh, ask for additional margin as and when a particular strike price is reached uh, 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 you know the market price reaches a particular price uh, he asks for the additional margin so this margin has to be provided by both buyers as well as sellers of the option actually uh, you know margin requirement is a very very complex subject and i have made a separate video of that in, i will put it in the description if you want you can go and check out how margin uh, requirement is calculated by the national stock exchange for brokers for uh, you know individuals for retailers and for everyone so there is a detailed uh, uh, calculations uh, which has been done in my video you can go and have a look if you want to know more about uh, how margin uh, you know calculations are done and how the margins are determined now what are the uh, mean by writing naked options see usually traders are encouraged to sell options when they have the underlying in their portfolio so that they can hedge their portfolio through selling options what does it mean suppose i am i have got uh, larsen and tobro uh, stock uh, i am holding 1000 stock uh and i believe that the stock market is going to uh, you know the price of the lnt may go down in the near future so what i will do i will buy the put option for the larsen and tobro let us assume for the purpose of understanding that the lot size of the larsen and tobro is 1000 rupees 1000 so i have already i am already holding 1000 uh, uh, larsen and tobro stocks in my portfolio and i have sold a put option or uh, for you know uh, assuming that the market is not going to go down beyond a particular uh, price so and i have collected the premium in case the market goes down in in such a case then you have to exercise the option so when you exercise the option you should have adequate quantity of stocks to you know give it to the person who is going to buy the stock from you so that is why it is you know called you know if a person is having 1000 stock then it is now called as covered uh, option covered call option covered put option suppose if i am don't have 1000 but i have still sold a put option for 1000 one lot that is 1000 stock in such case they are called as naked options i hope i have made this concept clear if i am holding the underlying then it is a covered call a covered option if i am not ho ho holding and if i sell an option then it is called as selling or writing naked option so selling an option is also called as write, writing an option okay writing option and selling option are the same so in the absence of the underlying the option seller has has to have more than 120% margin requirement this is basically for the uh, you know uh, option writers uh, okay uh, this is the end of the introduction to options uh, in the next video i am going to discuss in detail uh, various option strategies Uh, used by uh, uh, intraday as well as swing traders thank you